Now let's start off by talking about a technology that has ushered in this whole new era of hassle-free city commutes for our urban dwellers. For those who really couldn't afford the normal torque converter automatics, let alone dream of the really fancy dual-clutch DSGs or the PDKs, I'm talking about the automated manual transmission. Now I know that it's been around for a while and we've spoken about it plenty of times, but there's still so much confusion about it. We still keep getting questions. So I thought we'd talk about it in a little bit more detail. Essentially, the automated manual transmission is nothing like your conventional automatic gearboxes. It is in fact a manual gearbox that remains unchanged, which has an electro-hydraulic mechanism for automating the gear shifts. The AMT operates on the manual transmission of a car just like a driver would. It opens and closes the clutch, it engages and disengages the gears, and both these control movements are executed by hydraulic actuators, which in turn are controlled by the transmission control unit, which replaces the hands and the brains of a driver. Now this entire unit is delivered to a manufacturer as a sealed unit, which the manufacturer then incorporates within the conventional gearbox assembly. Now the use of the AMT is quite simple. You don't have the P mode in this, you only have the neutral, the reverse and the D mode, that's a drive mode. So. Uh, to start the car you have to put your foot on the brake, start the car and then you slot it into D and you're off. It's as simple as that. But the AMT is not a new system. It has been employed in Europe and other developed markets for some time now and not very successfully if I may add. Now the reason for this as explained by Mr. I.V. Rao who's the managing executive officer at Maruti and the brains behind this car and the scenario was that manufacturers of the AMT just haven't been able to make the gear shifts completely seamless and smooth and jerk-free uh, just like the automatic gearboxes. Now in Europe, the gear shifts per kilometer are far lesser so the use of the clutch pedal itself is far less which is why in Europe, the Europeans would just rather pay for an automatic gearbox or then stick to a manual gearbox rather than have the, the cumbersome AMT in their cars. Now they're neither as uh, obsessed with fuel efficiency as Indians are. So in Europe it kind of didn't really make sense but if you look at it in India it was kind of like a light bulb moment for the manufacturers. AMD seemed to be perfect for the Indian conditions. Not only does it give the driver the peace of mind of clutchless shifts, something that metropolitan dwellers are direly craving for, it is also as fuel efficient as a regular manual gearbox and it's a cheap technology which doesn't really increase the cost of your car too much. Case in point, Maruti was able to launch the Alto K10 with the AMT at a spectacular price point of Rs 3.8 lakhs ex show. Now there are other manufacturers of the automated manual transmission such as ZF which was the pioneer and there's Getrag, there's Wapco. But the choice for Indian manufacturers seems to be unanimously Ignati Morelli AMT system. And the reason, once again, as Mr. Ivy Rao explained to us, was that the Magneti Morelli system was the perfect compromise between cost and efficiency. And they've been able to package into one tiny little unit which can be used on smaller cars such as these. So this kind of works for Indian manufacturers perfectly. The AMT was first seen in India with the Maruti Celerio, but the trend seems to have caught on with other Indian manufacturers as well. Tata recently launched its compact sedan the Zest with the AMT, while Mahindra expressed their willingness to adopt AMT in the future with the Quanto. Ironically, this frugal, convenient and mileage-friendly technology has its derivatives from one of the most affluent, extravagant and excessive motoring indulgences, Formula One. And the first time it was seen on a road car was in 1997 on a Ferrari 355 F1. Ironic, isn't it? To sum it up then, the advantages. It's cheap, it's less polluting, it's fuel efficient and it hardly occupies any space inside here. The disadvantages are that it is a little bit jerky. It's a little uncomfortable to begin with but once you get used to it, it is a massive convenience. Now moving on to our next technology which deals with another kind of convenience. A convenience not just for the driver but also for the oncoming traffic. A convenience that translates into safety as well. Now what we have with us today is Audi's flagship limousine, the A8L. But not just any ordinary A8L, this is the car that hides behind this hood. A fire-breathing 4.2-litre twin-turbo V8 diesel engine. Here's some numbers for you. 
about 400 horsepower, 850 newton meters of max torque. And by the way, that is about twice as what you get with the Audi R8 V10. Zero to 100 in under five seconds. But the real protagonist of this story is this, Audi's Matrix LED lights. Derived from Audi's Le Mans winning R18 e-tron quattro endurance machine, the Matrix LED lights made their debut on a road car with the updated A8L. How do they work? An ultra-light sensitive camera detects the light sources from oncoming vehicles and then masks out the high beam light distribution around them in real time. This ensures maximum illumination while ensuring that the oncoming traffic isn't blinded by the strong throw of the LED lights. Now each headlight unit is made up of 25 different light emitting diodes which are electronically controlled. Now using 5 reflectors per headlight unit, that's a possible combination of 9.6 million lighting options. That's like one for each person in the world. Now even Mercedes-Benz has a similar intelligent camera-based LED lighting system on the new S-Class which controls the high beam to avoid inconveniencing oncoming traffic. But unlike the Merc system which uses a series of tiny motors to control the LEDs, Audi's Matrix LEDs are completely software driven. Now the reason, well, it's two-pronged. One of course is that the Audi uh, system can detect up to eight cars at once, which the Merc can't. And of course uh, the second reason is that LEDs have a lifespan of about 20,000 hours, which a mechanical system just does not have. And it's not just the headlights, even the turn signals have a party trick of their own. The LEDs in the turn signals light up successively in blocks every 150 milliseconds, moving in the direction the driver wishes to turn. And this serves up quite an interesting visual effect. Now an additional function of the Matrix LED technology is something called the marking light which you get with the optional night vision assistance. So when the night vision camera detects a person standing in front of the critical area of the car, the individual LED will blink thrice not just warning the person but also marking his outline in the background thereby warning the driver. Now sure the A8L comes with cornering lights, but then so many cars these days do, right? Well, one of the most interesting things about the Matrix LED technology is its ability to tap into the car's navigation system and then use the navigation data to then control the lights. Now for example, if you're moving out of an urban area, the car knows this through the navigation system and it automatically engages the high beam for you. Now when you're approaching a corner, the car knows this before you've even begun to give steering inputs and it already has begun the process of illuminating that corner for you. And all this put together, I think, is just very, very cool. Considering that 40% of all fatal accidents happen in the dark of night, Audi's Matrix LEDs could be a silently important technology in making our roads safer.